What a blessing it is to be with you. I am Pastor John Pinnell of Calvary Chapel of Lake Villa, also one of the voices here on WLGS 101.5 FM. It is time for this morning's devotional, looking at John chapter 5, verses 10 through 16. I titled this, A Meaningful Sabbath. Well, after Jesus had healed a man with a 38-year illness, the man was seen carrying his bedroll, which for the religious rulers was a serious violation of their Sabbath day traditions. Therefore, when they saw him, they said, verse 10, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. So he explained, verse 11, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. And when they asked him to identify Jesus, he did not know Jesus' name, nor could he point him out because the place was very crowded. This was such a meaningful Sabbath for the man who had been healed of a 38-year illness, but not for the religious rulers who were constantly on the hunt for lawbreakers. The man carrying his bedroll was not the only thing that upset the religious rulers, but that Jesus healed this man on the Sabbath day. They saw that as the greater violation. However, Jesus' marvelous works proved, according to Luke 6, verse 5, that the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. Well, back in Jeremiah 17, 21, we have a Sabbath day um, law that states, Take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Well, this is John's first mention of Jesus' Sabbath day contentions with the religious rulers. They would actually be many of them, six by number. Luke 6, 7 tells us, So the scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely, whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. When we get to verse 14, we remember that the lame man had not sought for Jesus. But it was Jesus who had originally found him that he might heal this man. Now Jesus finds him once again and says, verse 14, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest your, a worse thing come upon you. By saying this, Jesus seemed to connect this man's 38-year illness with some past sin. Jesus was not saying that all sickness is connected to sin because this would go against his words in John's Gospel, chapter 9, where the disciples asked Jesus, John 9, verse 2, Rabbi, who sinned that this, this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, verse 3, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So not all sickness or illness is connected to some personal sin. However, this man understood that his sin had cost him his health and livelihood for 38 years. Well, after Jesus had spoken to him, verses 15 and 16, we read that the man departed. He told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. And for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Now, I do not believe that the man was trying to cause trouble for Jesus by reporting him to the religious authorities. Jesus had just healed him of the 38-year illness, and he wanted to tell anybody who would listen of his miraculous healing. However, this became a turning point with the religious rulers of Israel, for they no longer sought to question Jesus about his legitimacy, but now sought to kill him because he had broken this Sabbath day law of healing on the Sabbath. But understand, this law was not God's law. This was a man-made tradition. Jewish law identified 39 categories of activities prohibited on the Sabbath. If someone was injured on a Sabbath, they were only allowed to stabilize the person and had to wait until the Sabbath was over to administer acts of healing like the setting of a bone or give them medicine. 
according to Shabbat 22, verse 5, they may not set a fracture. If someone's hand or foot is dislocated, he may not pour cold water over it, but may wash it in the usual way. And if it heals, it heals. Sadly, their man-made traditions made acts of healing on the Sabbath unlawful. Yet Jesus understood that they put their traditions before the very word of God, declaring in Mark 7, 9, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. To this day, the marvelous works of Christ offer healing and forgiveness to those who have faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that you would, Lord, do your work of healing and forgiveness in our lives this very day. And Lord, whether it's a Monday, Tuesday, or as it is today, a Friday, may, Lord, we find that your work in our lives is marvelous. And may we be willing to tell all who would listen about the wonderful works that you've done for us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.